I mean, it's a great pleasure to introduce again Klaus Mainzer, um, who uh, from the Technical University of Munich, but at the same time here in Tübingen at the Karl Friedrich von Weizsäcker Center. Um, and he will present uh, a roadmap which were recently um, published, and I think, I mean, it would hand it to the uh, government um, from the German steering group of AI standardization. Um, and uh, I will send you now in the chat the link to the PDF document of the roadmap. Um, still, I think, I mean, it is the idea that uh, Klaus Mainzer will present it here um, uh, directly for you. And um, so, yeah, Herr Mainzer, many thanks. Please start. Okay. Um, thank you for uh, the kind um, introduction. And actually, I uh, want uh, uh, to, to discuss with you about the results of these uh, um, uh, perspectives of the German steering group of AI standardization. And uh, I'm a member of this uh, uh, group, and it was presented uh, in the beginning of uh, December uh, at the occasion of um, the uh, IT uh, summit of the German federal uh, government. And uh, I will start with a short uh, introduction, which I uh, call from verification to <clears throat> certification. And uh, then in the second part, we can read uh, together the document. And I hope you um, uh, will have uh, uh, the uh, uh, link uh, to this document uh, later on. Um, now, uh, let me start um, with an introductory uh, comment uh, concerning AI, understanding AI. This is a, a, a small picture illustrating my understanding and the understanding of our uh, steering group. And uh, you all know um, AI started historically with logics. And that is also my personal background, because my personal background since my uh, uh, studies at the university were uh, foundations of mathematic, mathematical uh, uh, logic. And uh, actually, um, for example, Turing and so on in the beginning of the uh, 50s, uh, AI started with uh, logical uh, systems. And that means in epistemic words, um, one uh, tried to simulate human thinking, human thinking, the logical rules in the sense of formal representation in symbolic logic. And therefore, this period of uh, AI is nowadays called symbolic logic. The paradigm is more or less symbolic logic, symbolic AI. Typical example in the beginning was automatic approving that is noted on the right side of the diagram and uh, later on the so-called knowledge-based systems, rule-based uh, representation, uh, representation of knowledge, which is uh, still used nowadays, for example, in uh, uh, hospitals. Um, and uh, then a main experience was that uh, not all kind of um, problem solving, uh, pattern recognition, sensory uh, activities can be represented by rule based systems in the sense of symbolic logic. And uh, therefore, this new period was called sub symbolic AI. And it concerns the simulation, for example, of sensory systems in uh, robotics. And that is a new paradigm of machine learning via mass, that means big data. And that is nowadays, you know that very well, uh, the hype. And uh, uh, But uh, uh, we all know um, uh, humans, for example, as the intelligence of humans cannot be reduced to logical thinking alone or to uh, the ability of pattern recognition and the sensory system alone. But uh, um, uh, the smart ability of humans is a combination of both. And uh, that means uh, a kind of hybrid 
cognitive system. Combination of learning methods by statistical methods with logical and knowledge-based uh, abilities. And that is nowadays called hybrid AI. And that is the future goal of AI, the combination of both in the so-called hybrid AI. And so hybrid AI or on the uh, cognitive side, on the biological side, the hybrid, hybrid cognitive systems have the highest degrees of uh, intelligence. Now, um, let us shortly come to uh, machine learning. That is a sub-symbolic, um, uh, uh, the field of sub-symbolic uh, systems. And uh, you know, that is a, a great hype nowadays, which I uh, also described in my uh, English book on artificial intelligence. Here, um, machine learning relates to uh, simplified models of the human brain, not logical rules, but simplified uh, models of the biological human brain with nodes, for example, uh, representing neurons and uh, edges representing the synaptic uh, uh, interactions. And uh, in the model here, uh, the edges are uh, connected, so, uh, connected by uh, weights. That means uh, by numbers in order to indicate the uh, synaptical uh, intensity. And uh, then um, a node or a cell, um, a neuron is said to fire or to be excited if uh, the sum of uh, the neighboring um, rates is larger than a certain threshold value. And uh, here in these uh, uh, pictures, um, uh, we uh, can study uh, multi-layered neural networks, um, rather realistic to the architecture of the neocortex of the human brain with four or five uh, layers. And uh, the information processing is the, the information, sorry, the information, the information processing is um, against across these um, uh, layers. And um, uh, uh, intelligence or uh, the ability, the main ability of um, uh, pattern uh, recognition is realized here by uh, the connection by patterns of uh, uh, excited uh, neurons and the change, and that means learning here, the change of these patterns is realized by learning algorithms, learning uh, algorithms, uh, computing with the weights, uh, which I mentioned before, uh, which uh, represent the, uh, syn the uh, uh, synaptic uh, interactions. And uh, uh, such as in uh, uh, psychology, we can uh, distinguish uh, different kinds of learning algorithms, for example, supervised learning algorithms. In this case, the system is trained by a set of data, for example, the distribution of uh, pixels of a face, and uh, then uh, the system is able automatically by algorithms, a learning algorithm, by approximation um, and comparison to uh, recognize the trained face, for example, the trained uh, data set among a huge number of other perceived uh, um, faces. Non-supervised learning only means that the system is spontaneously able to uh, detect um, similarities and correlations uh, between uh, data um, in order to classify uh, objects or persons um, uh, with respect to these uh, criteria. Reinforcement learning is well known in the engineering sciences and deep learning only relates to uh, the number of uh, layers um, in order to improve pattern recognition. Uh, pattern recognition is a crucial ability of machine learning. You can say no more and uh, no, uh, no less. And uh, that is a great advantage 
of uh, modern machine learning, but it's, it is also as a source for failures. And uh, the reason is that nowadays we, uh, can, we must not only consider the simplified uh, neural networks with only uh, three or four um, uh, layers, but uh, nowadays, for example, for application in uh, uh, aut automated uh, car driving, we have to consider uh, networks with uh, uh, 30, 40, 50 uh, layers. Uh, with a huge number of nodes and an explosion of parameters. So nobody knows exactly what is going on in the neural network, in the single uh, neurons. It is a black box. And uh, that is brought uh, nicely here to the point in this uh, um, uh, cartoon here of a MIT, uh, of a MIT journal um, with uh, these two um, uh, cars. The second car is a police car, and the policeman uh, asked uh, this guy in the other car, uh, does your car have any idea why my car pulled it uh, over? Uh, so we need more explainability, we need more probability, and in the end, more accountability and distinction of causes and effects in order to decide uh, questions here for automated car driving, questions of uh, law and uh, um, responsibility. Now, um, that is from a methodological point of view, illustrated here in this uh, diagram, diagram uh, here um, uh, below, uh, we found, uh, we see our uh, statistical learning, uh, statistical learning, um, uh, started with a finite set, a sample of data, and then there are algorithms to detect correlations, similarities of data whatsoever, which are collected in a probabilistic uh, model. By the way, uh, uh, from a, a philosophical point of view, this approach is rather old. It uh, um, uh, reminds me of Rudolf Carnap in the early 50s. He started with uh, statistical uh, inductive logic. That was his name. And actually, that was a starting point for what was later on called statistical learning. And uh, the mathematical theory was developed uh, already in uh, the 90s. And uh, vice versa. Statistical reasoning means we start with a uh, probabilistic model. That means a statistical distribution, for example, in order to derive statistical uh, features of uh, observations and out outcomes. But that is only weak artificial uh, intelligence. And it is uh, realized even by uh, simple um, organisms in nature. So until uh, nowadays, um, the crucial ability of humans uh, is to detect behind the clouds of data, um, behind the probabilistic distribution, uh, causal relations. That means to isolate uh, parameters as causes and effects. Um, and uh, that is uh, in, there is no general algorithm which can do that for, uh, any uh, probabilistic distribution, but uh, at least in uh, restricted cases, in restricted cases under certain constraints, it is uh, possible and it can be proved from a mathematical point of view. And that is by the way, um, uh, research which is done in uh, uh, the Max Planck Institute in uh, uh, Tübingen. But I will not um, go on in more details uh, here. Um, the uh, uh, challenge of uh, uh, correctness and security is uh, rather old in software engineering uh, nowadays uh, in AI. And these pictures um, uh, remind us of uh, uh, dangerous failures uh, in the past uh, when uh, software was incorrect, leading to catastrophes. For example, here, uh, this picture um, 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 reminds us of uh, dramatic situations in the 80s of the last 
century when the for first uh, automated uh, uh, um, um, uh, predictions for um, uh, predictions for um, uh, radiation uh, leads to uh, the deaths of uh, uh, patients. Or uh, on the left, the crash of the rocket Ariane 5 in the end of the 90s, or on the right in uh, the last year, the software failure of Boeing uh, 737. So these dramatic accidents highlight again the dangers of safety critical systems without software verification. So this software verification uh, was already a great demand uh, in uh, software engineering. And here in this uh, scheme illustrated in a simplified way, the steps leading to verification in software engineering in general, uh, starting with the requirements of uh, software, and then the design, the implementation in the application domain, and then uh, verification, and then during um, the uh, application, the uh, maintains, maintenance of um, uh, the uh, applied software. So um, in general, a program uh, is said to uh, be um, uh, certified if it can be verified that it followed a special specification or in less technical world, if we can prove that uh, the software exactly does what we want uh, uh, that software uh, should do. And um, uh, in the ideal case, uh, uh, these uh, verifications can be proved in a mathematical rigorous way. Uh, that is the case uh, here for, prof, uh, for proof assistance, uh, which proves the correctness of a computer program in a consistent formalism like a constructive proof in mathematics. And here in brackets, there are uh, examples um, of uh, proof assistance. This is kind of research I'm also engaged in. Um, on the left, there is a, a book which was uh, published by a, a research group here uh, in Munich two years ago. And we are just um, um, prepared a new uh, volume uh, which is uh, uh, going uh, into print in the same with the same publisher, uh, World Scientific uh, Singapore. Um, but uh, the disadvantage of this approach is uh, that it can only be applied until now in restricted practical applications. Uh, there was already a very early application with uh, the first automated metro, metro line in the world in Paris in uh, the beginning of the 90s that was uh, checked by uh, the proof assistant Koch. But, uh, and uh, later on there was a cooperation, by the way, in Germany of Koch with Siemens, Siemens company uh, here uh, in Munich. But uh, again, the disadvantage is with increasing uh, uh, complexity, uh, the uh, uh, checking uh, procedure uh, uh, becomes uh, very difficult. And uh, that is uh, illustrated here in this uh, diagram. Nowadays, practically, we must uh, relate to degrees of certification. Of course, in the ideal case, we have these exact proofs of proof assistance, but there are um, uh, checking procedures with less accuracy. For example, here the so-called model-based testing. In this case, only a simplified model is tested or only statistical uh, testing or even only ad hoc testing. So we must aim at increasing accuracy, security, and trust in software engineering uh, in spite of increasing complexity of civil and uh, industrial uh, applications, but with respect to the costs of testing. And costs of testing means utility functions of trade of uh, time, delivery versus market value, or cost effectiveness, effectiveness uh, ratio, uh, ratio of uh, uh, available uh, products. And uh, so uh, from certification to standardization, mathematical correctness and technical certification 
are not sufficient. Uh, we also have to co consider uh, legal, social, usability, ethical criteria, economic criteria with respect to the market, even ecological criteria, which must be integrated into the standards of AI. And standard, that is now uh, the key term. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, um, as announced in the beginning, the German steering group of AI standardization comes in. The German steering group is a high level group with members of science, uh, economy, politics, industry, uh, civil society, for example, the German Research Center of AI, the DFKI, the platform of uh, learning systems, uh, ACATESH, the abbreviation for our National Academy of Science and Technology, um, uh, companies such as uh, IBM, uh, Siemens, uh, federal minister, ministries, uh, or representatives of the German parliament representing uh, society. And they were appointed by the German Ministry of Economy and Energy, but also involved is the German Ministry of um, um, Research and Education and the German Ministry of uh, Labor. Together with the German Institute of Standardization in the German abbreviation that is DIN, Deutsches Institut für Normung, and their task is to structuralize the roadmap and the future strategy of standardization in artificial intelligence. It is obvious uh, it is not sufficient to consider only um, the national uh, standards. That is done on the national uh, level here uh, with the blue color. That is uh, on the one side, uh, Dean, which I explained uh, before here with their special fields of application. And uh, it is the, D, uh, the DKE, that is uh, the German um, uh, Association or Society for um, Electrical uh, Engineering and uh, Information Processing. And uh, then uh, here in green color, uh, the national standard must be um, embedded on the European level with the corresponding uh, European uh, institutions for electrical engineering, information processing, and so on, like in the, um, um, such as in the, uh, uh, on the le national level. And then even the European level is too small and must be embedded in the international level. And uh, that is uh, uh, ISO uh, International um, um, Institute of uh, uh, Standardization and uh, several uh, sub groups. Now, uh, these are the topics of uh, the foundational standards of artificial intelligence, uh, which were um, elaborated uh, by uh, this uh, uh, steering uh, group uh, with the task uh, to create a common language of AI standardization with uh, um, um, concerning projects or um, the development of further criteria of standards. I will consider uh, these standards in more detail uh, later on by representing uh, the uh, uh, documents. And uh, a crucial, a crucial demand, of course, uh, for standardization was trustworthiness. How can trust in AI application be uh, increased here with the corresponding uh, uh, projects? And uh, these are now uh, the working groups of um, the uh, steering uh, group. Uh, we uh, worked uh, yeah, nearly uh, two years in these uh, uh, groups. First group, foundations. Uh, the foundational group uh, considered uh, data standards, the common terminology classification, the AI elements of methodology. I was engaged in this group. Then there was a second group uh, considering ethics and responsibility AI, the third group on security, then a fourth group on uh, um, uh, certification uh, uh, and uh, uh, verification, 
And you can imagine that I was also <laughs> engaged uh, in this group. And then there were uh, three other groups concerning application, mobility and logistic, industrial automation, and last but not least, uh, medicine. Now, uh, this diagram uh, illustrates the basic and uh, horizontal topics with applications here in uh, the vertical uh, blocks. Uh, the basic topics are uh, the, as I mentioned already before, the AI elements, terminology, common terminology, uh, data classification. The horizontal topics typically for all these application um, uh, uh, concern safety, privacy, security, uh, quality criteria, ethical questions, questions of uh, legal framework. And here, uh, the vertical application for industrial automation, mobility, logistic, health, uh, resources, sustainability, uh, financial services, agriculture, construction, infrastructure, read. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, retail, uh, retail uh, uh, trade, uh, for example, in German Einzelhandel, uh, very practical um, applications, uh, and uh, so on. Now, um, a crucial uh, criterion was our critical criticality uh, pyramid. That means a pyramid for a risk adapted regulatory system. And that is illustrated here uh, with different colors. In the top, there are the applications with unacceptable potential for harm. And uh, this criticality uh, pyramid is uh, illustrated here uh, for the example of automated machine uh, translation. That is, by the way, a typical example of symbolic uh, AI still nowadays. Automatic machine translation, sometimes it is nowadays um, uh, also uh, connected uh, with uh, uh, deep learning. Uh, anyway, um, this um, uh, machine uh, uh, translation uh, is forbidden, uh, by the way, for applications for testimonies in court. It is obvious because uh, these are very crucial questions and the translation must be absolutely uh, rigorous. And um, therefore it is nowadays by law forbidden to use automated systems at court by the way, that was also a problem now in, uh, in the Brexit uh, negotiations, perhaps you have heard that uh, the documents must be uh, translated and that needs time for human experts. And uh, uh, here also uh, people does not try in the automated um, uh, translations and therefore uh, these nego negotiations, Brexit nego negotiation, are also here in the, the red uh, zone. And uh, then uh, below that uh, level, there are more uh, relaxed applications, applications with the substantial, substantial uh, potential for harm. Uh, examples are uh, machine translation of contracts and uh, medical letters, and even more relaxed. Um, uh, uh, MT uh, of uh, technical operating uh, manuals or even more relaxed for public uh, news portals, use in social media or um, uh, applications without or with only minimal potential of arm, um, uh, private uh, emails, uh, blocks in closed uh, groups, translation of information um, in uh, private uh, websites, uh, private recommendations, things like that. Uh, here, uh, some uh, uh, numbers are um, uh, uh, announced uh, relating to a score for uh, um, automated machine um, uh, translation. 
This is the so-called blue score, abbreviation for bilingual evaluation under study. And that is a very simple uh, criterion. Uh, it only relates to the comparison of uh, sequences of uh, words. That means in this case, uh, automated uh, translated document is compared with variants of uh, uh, translations by human uh, experts. And uh, the uh, failures in uh, percents are the basis for these um, uh, values of uh, uh, scoring. And uh, in the beginning, uh, that was only very simple comparison of sequences of words. Uh, but later on, it was uh, more uh, specified by uh, restriction to special domains with a special terminology. And of course, um, it would be the aim in the end to have not only these kind of uh, syntactical uh, uh, metrics, but also uh, semantical um, measures. But that is the state of the art here. Um, uh, of course, um, you can imagine uh, it cannot be the uh, aim to have in all applications uh, quantitative uh, measures. This is the same situation such as in uh, the uh, uh, proof systems, which I mentioned before. There are the rigorous uh, demands but uh, on the other side, uh, there must be more relaxed uh, standards. And uh, that was considered in uh, um, a lot of um, uh, domains. In the end, the steering group cooperates with science, economy, politics, and civil society to suggest standards of AI technology in the sense of the Dean standards and uh, uh, in order to prepare legislative uh, initiatives and therefore the parliament was also, also involved in the steering group. That is my last uh, uh, slide here uh, for uh, my uh, introduction, uh, AI standardization. I, that was a, a crucial point uh, for us, should not only be understood as controlling and regulation tasks, here of course the danger of over-regulation and uh, creativity uh, could be killed, but um, uh, we intend as an orientation of sustainable and uh, responsible uh, innovation. In the past, by the way, the made of Germany um, was uh, also uh, supported um, and uh, enforced because uh, people had the impression uh, these products are in the end, uh, certified uh, by uh, good standards. Now, um, here I will stop my uh, introduction. And um, perhaps now let us together uh, consider uh, the um, consider. Uh, the um, consider the document of German standardization that is here. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Hello. Yes, yes. Good? Yeah. Um, uh, perhaps it uh, is a nice idea to uh, uh, to have a short over, uh, overview, a survey here on uh, this document, German Standardization Roadmap on Artificial Intelligence, Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and uh, energy and uh, now I have some pages which I want to highlight for you um, in order for later uh, discussion.
these are, by the way, the members. Um, only uh, as representatives here, the Federal Association of Artificial Intelligence, uh, the Ministry of uh, Labor and uh, Social Affairs, or Bitcoin uh, was involved, Fraunhofer uh, Alliance, Microsoft, or uh, IBM, or the DFKI, uh, the German uh, Institute of uh, um, artificial intelligence, or here the Federal Ministry of Education and Research. I like to mention uh, Ina um, Schieferdecker, Professor Schieferdecker. She is now in the Ministry of Education and uh, uh, Research. And uh, some of us uh, will uh, remember that the, well, she was also um, uh, involved in a research project uh, at uh, the Karl Friedrich uh, von Weizsäcker uh, Center, uh, the Ministry of Economic Affairs and uh, Energy. Uh, that uh, um, guy <laughs> was uh, a member of our, uh, uh, of our steering group as um, representative of the parliament before, because Andreas Steyer is the only engineer of the German parliament. It is unbelievable, but uh, it is true. And uh, then the German Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Wolfgang Walster, who uh, was the chairman of our group. He's the former um, um, uh, director of uh, the German uh, Institute of uh, Artificial Intelligence. And he was followed by uh, Jana Köhler, now uh, Siemens was uh, involved and uh, the Dean organization. And uh, uh, one of uh, our main uh, federal uh, institutes, uh, BSI, the Federal Office for Information uh, Security, responsible for all kind of technical uh, security um, in uh, uh, Germany and um, the representative of the platform uh, learning systems in uh, Germany. Now, uh, a nice and very illustrative diagram on page 39. Yeah. This one. For practical application. This is a three-dimensional classification scheme for evaluating an AI-based system. Three dimensions. The criticality dimension with the, the distinction which I mentioned before, from no or minimal potential for harm to unacceptable potential for harm. Then uh, a coordinate for capabilities relating to uh, perception, um, uh, understanding, action, uh, communication, um, and um, uh, then a third um, coordinate uh, relating to hybrid learning, which I mentioned before, uh, machine learning, uh, knowledge representation and variance, that is the uh, logical uh, dimension, and here another uh, degree is considered concerning problem solving, search, searching, optimization, and decision uh, making. And that is a, a practical application here for autonomous uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, they uh, are uh, with uh, certain potential for harm and uh, uh, sometimes uh, considerable uh, potential for harm concerning criticality. But uh, nowadays it is all only reserved to restricted to uh, perception concerning capabilities, uh, contrary, uh, by the way, to conventional uh, garbage uh, trucks, uh, which are uh, here related to machine learning uh, nowadays, but uh, with uh, no or minimal potential for uh, Ah. Mm. Interesting, another application, is it's page 53. Here is the pyramid again. 
uh, which concerns degrees of uh, autonomy. Uh, requirements for a trustworthy AI. Data protection question, does the AI ensure privacy and protect sensitive information, security, reliability, transparency, fairness, and now interesting autonomy and control. Is a self-determined effective use of the AI uh, possible? Crucial uh, criterion. And um, then um, a quality guideline on uh, page 58 here with the crucial criteria of uh, uh, currency, accuracy, preci uh, precision, conformity, consistency, transparency, reliability, understandability, uh, completeness. And uh, uh, each group, and this is now the group, was a group of foundation, ends with demands or needs for the standardization in this field concerning foundations. First need support for international standardization uh, work uh, on uh, AI, the need for drawing up um, of a technology roadmap uh, for uh, AI or the risk management for AI, data quality management of AI, management of transparency and the voidness of discrimination, design principles for AI. Now, that was the first research uh, group. I will not uh, um, uh, explain or illustrate uh, or represent all research uh, groups, but uh, perhaps the next one may be interesting for you too, uh, uh, which concerns the, res the group of the um, uh, standardization um, group concerning uh, ethics. Page 64. Yeah, this is um, um, an illustration of responsibilities, the long chain of uh, responsibility. Uh, here are the stakeholders or the main players, the scientists, data scientists, persons or institutions which are involved, uh, persons or institutions. Again, the scientists with uh, the uh, uh, implementation of uh, algorithms, selection of methods, the selection of measure of quality and uh, fairness. Um, then in the end, they consider a statistical model with decision rules, which must be interpreted and uh, leading to actions. And there must be a, a feedback to uh, the evaluation in order to illustrate this kind of um, uh, discussion. And uh, there is a canon of values and uh, criticality uh, check. Um, uh, let me end this group on page 73, again with the needs or demands in the field of, um, of uh, ethics. Here, the need one was design initial criticality checks of AI systems quickly and easily. Quickly and easily relates to practical uh, application uh, in uh, industry, uh, for uh, example. Not uh, seminar discussions in uh, uh, philosophy on AI and uh, uh, ethics in general, but uh, for concrete uh, application. Then operationalization of uh, ethical values. How far is that possible? And how far, what is done uh, internationally in that field? Standardization of a concept of uh, privacy, ethical uh, design, design of uh, value uh, systems, and uh, so on and so on. For example, here include quality backward chain in uh, AI uh, life, cycle, uh, life cycle, if you have a concrete uh, uh, product. 
uh, which has a, a certain life cycle of uh, uh, evaluation. And uh, the third research group uh, concerns um, uh, proofs of uh, conformity and certification and verification. Uh, I also like to highlight these results because uh, here I was also uh, involved. I mentioned, I mentioned that in the beginning. This is another illustration in order to illustrate classification of the categories of AI quality criteria in uh, conformity assessment. It is more or less in another um, uh, demonstration what I uh, mentioned uh, in the beginning here, uh, technical tests and uh, market uh, ability aiming at international standards and uh, specifications with the criteria of fairness, transparency and inter Pretability, data protection, reliability, and uh, security, and in the other direction, aiming at proof of the conformity of AI products and uh, processes um, uh, with uh, ethical and normative uh, guidelines, uh, social requirements, legal framework conditions, which must be involved, which must be integrated in the standards. I already uh, mentioned that uh, in the uh, uh, beginning. And um, on uh, page 78, there is a uh, diagram e illustrating the evaluation methodology and uh, test uh, quality um, from uh, calibration, inspection, uh, audit uh, validation up to uh, verification, uh, aiming at the certification of an uh, AI software that was also mentioned by me in the uh, beginning. And um, on page 89, there are the needs um, I mentioned that we, we uh, uh, conclude our uh, elaboration with needs in that special field here in the, in the field of uh, certification and uh, verification. Uh, what we need is uh, implementation uh, programs, a uh, relationship between technical requirements on the one hand and legal and ethical requirements on the other. This is a crucial demand for standards, not only uh, technical, uh, uh, technical uh, requirements and embedding in existing test schemes and uh, test uh, infrastructures, the development of AI standard as a participation uh, uh, process necessity of a management system uh, standard, of course, with respect to practical application and uh, AI standards, uh, smart assistance for um, assistance for authorities and uh, public uh, uh, agencies and uh, so on. Now, uh, I will stop here. Uh, there are uh, several under other research groups. Of course, we can also go here in the details if you are interested in uh, concerning AI uh, security of uh, AI systems. I mentioned that in the beginning, um, industrial uh, automation for application, mobility and logistics, and uh, in the end, uh, AI in uh, medicine. Perhaps uh, because that is now a hype with, with uh, respect to uh, Corona. Let us have a finite uh, look to uh, medicine here. Requirements uh, and uh, challenges. And uh, the standardization needs on page 132, here are the needs. Defining error classifications, misclassifications, and learning from uh, errors. 
define medical ethical uh, values that is of course in cooperation with the second um, a group of uh, uh, the steering committee. Then the third need here is create a review process to evaluate existing uh, principles. There are worldwide, of, of course, a lot of approaches because in this field uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, important uh, uh, practical or application clearly define legal definitions and requirements for self-learning and self-developing changing AI systems. Of course, that is now, uh, I would say, the main uh, demand in, uh, uh, in uh, medicine because step-by-step uh, -step, uh, more or less autonomous systems are uh, applied here, even in uh, introduced in the hospitals and uh, therefore, we need here um, our criteria, criteria uh, also with respect to responsibility um, uh, at the courts. That means from a legal uh, point of view. Yeah, uh, uh, let me stop here. And uh, I hope now uh, we have uh, at least some minutes for uh, discussion um, concerning my introduction or here, uh, the document. Thank you very much. Um, I think, let's say, <laughs> that document, I don't know how many pages has it in total, but I mean, there's a, uh, a lot of content. I, I think it is uh, in the end with a, uh, with a lot of uh, other edited uh, documents, I think it is more than uh, 200 pages, yeah. 250, but, uh, I'm not quite sure. Even the small selection you gave, I mean, give us a lot of topics to discuss. But yeah, I mean, I would like to ask everybody to to open the microphone if you have a question, a comment um, to one or the other point uh, Klaus Mainzer was mentioning. Please. Um, may I ask something, Rainer? Sure, Maya, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, thank you, um, Professor Mainzer. Uh, could you just go back to the presentation that you made of the criticality pyramid with for machine learning translation? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not quite sure I understood what you, the, the methodology there the, uh, with the score that you used. Um, so you that was this one here. Yeah. yeah. So presentation, but it's the same one. Yeah. yeah. So you said you, you use a a score that was based on the number of syntactical errors committed by machine learning translation mm -hmm. software compared, I guess, with the um, translation expert uh, with a high degree of confidence in, in, in what he had mm -hmm. translated. So is it, well, so how do you use that score exactly? Is it that, uh, for instance, if you look at the top of the pyramid, mm -hmm. is it that any machine learning no. software yeah. is, is uh, forbidden yeah. or only the one who failed to get a sufficiently high score? Mm -hmm. and, and then if you use that kind of score, does it mean that you also apply it to human translators as a minimal requirement to be a translator in court? No, yeah. Um, I, I mentioned it's, it's, uh, the score is uh, called uh, the blue uh, score. The blue is the abbreviation of um, our bilingual or evaluation understanding bilingual. Um, that means uh, on the one side, there is the uh, uh, automated, automatic, automatically translated um, text. And on the other side, there are variants of uh, our translations by human experts. And uh, the quality is uh, compared uh, with respect uh, to failures. And uh, in uh, the original, in the simple approach of this matrix, only uh, 
the sequences of words were uh, compared and uh, as a metric for the quality of this uh, 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 translation. And later on, I, I think that was in uh, uh, the beginning of our century, and then uh, step by step, uh, the metrics was uh, improved, for example, by uh, restricting the metrics, not in general, but uh, to certain domains with uh, specialized uh, uh, terminologies uh, and so on. But uh, this kind of scores is uh, not uh, uh, intended to be a general score for all kind of uh, applications in uh, uh, for uh, critical um, for critical um, applications. Yeah, uh, not it's only restricted here for these uh, um, uh, translated uh, system. Yeah, but uh, my question was, is it that, would it be possible for a machine learning system that would improve on the score, that would go beyond a certain threshold on the score to be authorized in court? Or have you just blankly forbidden those to, to yeah. end up in yeah, court? Yeah. And would uh, you apply the same standard to a human? Um, yes, human, uh, human behavior, uh, so it is exactly in the, the tradition of uh, Turing, uh, it's a Turing test, uh, human behavior is, com is compared with the ability of a machine, machine translation, and uh, with respect uh, to uh, the failures. And uh, uh, that is the basis for the introduction of these kind of scaling uh, uh, score. Very simple to understand, I think. Okay. But uh, I underline it is only restricted here to machine learning. And uh, that is of course um, a testing, pros testing procedure under construction, that means it is uh, improved uh, step by step. And you know, uh, machine uh, based uh, translation uh, nowadays is uh, highly uh, ambitious. Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, uh, deep, deep learning, uh, deep, uh, a German software, um, and um, as is indicated by the name, that is not only rule-based uh, learning in the sense of uh, symbolic uh, AI, but it is connected with uh, deep learning. So especially in uh, this field of uh, automatically uh, uh, translated text, there is nowadays a great progress, uh, I think, uh, by the way, that was especially done uh, at the uh, DFKE, this kind of um, uh, research. And uh, so it was uh, uh, selected here as uh, a use case in order to illustrate, perhaps in an ideal case, in an ideal use case, uh, what would be uh, the aim of uh, standardization uh, in the future, also in the other fields of application. It would be nice, of course, to have a quantitative uh, measure and metrics which can be uh, applied in the different if in the different fields in order uh, to uh, measure uh, the safety uh, criticality, the crucial problem, of course, of software engineering in general and AI. Yeah, but that is not always uh, possible. It depends on the domains. Yeah. Further comments, questions? I mean, if nobody steps forward at the moment, I mean, I actually would have a couple of comments, but I mean, let me start um, with the first one. I mean, um, I 
got it a little bit that this is it's I mean if we fix standardization as as a term there's some kind of 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 meta standard on let's say uh, on a procedural level how I'm looking to AI and for instance not standardization in the way um, I think particularly in the 60s and 70s a time you experience better than me um, when 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 programming languages were specified I think I mean there were endless meetings of algol specification and I still remember then that Fortran 80 or 8 <laughs> X never came out because um, somehow the commission for standardizing the programming language could not agree in time. Um, and I think I, don't, I think it was the Fortran 90, but it was planned as 89 or something like that. Now, um, say, so, I mean, to my knowledge, I mean, uh, pro that would be something completely different if I want to do that for. Um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence because I don't speak about programming languages in the same way. My question was whether you took some experiences from that uh, way or where you were looking how the specification of programming languages were performed and, and worked out or didn't work out. Yes, of course, because um, I uh, mentioned a crucial insight, perhaps one of the main insights of um, our steering group was that uh, artificial intelligence nowadays can no longer be restricted to machine learning. Machine learning is a big hype. Still, it is a big hype. But uh, actually, in practical applications in industry, AI also use symbolic AI. So actually, uh, we have to do nowadays uh, with what we uh, call hybrid uh, AI. That means um, uh, statistical machine learning combined with these early experiences you mentioned. They are still in use. Uh, um, that is not uh, uh, the way of Kuhnian um, uh, progress uh, in um, in science, you know, uh, the idea was there are several uh, revolutions and uh, um, a new technology is overcoming the next, uh, um, um, uh, the next um, uh, technology in the sense sociologists like this picture of disruptive uh, uh, technologies. That is absolutely not true. Uh, the traditional, so-called traditional, uh, symbolic AI, traditional software engineering, is crucially embedded in modern applications. Machine learning is an important part now, nowadays, but it is only a part. So actually, we have the situation of hybrid um, uh, AI, and in that sense, uh, my answer to your question is clearly this experience from the former, from the uh, former periods of software engineering and AI, are involved in the modern development of uh, standardization. Yes. So thank you, Professor Mainz. I think Reinhard has to accept the delivery. <laughs> so he told me before that he might be absent. Uh, are there further uh, comments or questions? So I would have a question, if I may. Uh, so it's more a sociological question. So how difficult was it to reach a consensus in this steering group on the on the topics of this document? So could you um, tell us about the main obstacles that had to be <laughs> yeah. cleared? Yeah, um, um, I um, introduced in the beginning the members of the group. And uh, there were a lot of representatives of um, uh, the ministries and um, administration. Uh, personally, that is my personal obser observation. Of course, it depends on uh, your uh, uh, different background. My background is, of course, science on the one side. And I know the uh, criteria 
and the engagement of uh, uh, scientists and uh, the standards of uh, scientific uh, discussions and sometimes uh, struggles. And uh, in my case, I have also a good experience um, in uh, negotiations with companies because I'm a member of um, uh, the mentioned uh, National Academy of Science and Technology. And in this academy, the German so-called DAX uh, companies. What is it in English? DAX? I think it's DAX. You know, as I say, high level, uh, the big companies um, in uh, Germany, they are also represented in the Senate of uh, this academy. Not only the leading uh, engineers and scientists, but also, and so I have some uh, experiences um, with uh, uh, companies and uh, I know their standards and uh, I know uh, the difficulty sometimes to um, uh, find uh, um, uh, measures and uh, standards uh, of uh, companies with, um, um, uh, with science. But uh, a completely new experience for me was uh, the negotiation with ministries, with um, administration. And it was unbelievable to learn the complexity. Uh, perhaps you, you asked from a sociological background, Luhmann. Uh, uh, it was a study of Luhmann's sociology. The different systems in uh, uh, the political administration. The, dist the different uh, metrics, the standards, and um, the kind of style and uh, discussion. Uh, and then in the end, you must, bring, you must bring together these standards with the economic standards and the standards in science. That is a great uh, a challenge. And uh, I observed that even um, uh, people with great experience on the side of uh, uh, the companies uh, had their problems <laughs> with the standards in, um, in, uh, um, in ministries. But uh, I do not blame that because I learned, it was new for me, I learned that in ministry, ministries, there is a very, very complex administration. There are very rigorous by legal laws uh, demanded uh, processes of uh, um, uh, decision making and that is regulated and that must, must be considered uh, because uh, security standards, legal standards are represented in this form. And that is quite different, this experience from philosophical discussions of ethics and uh, technology. Um, uh, uh, you have simply learned the procedures and that was uh, rather new for me. And then in the end, you must uh, find um, uh, not a compromise, you must find uh, rational uh, standards which uh, are accepted in the end also by ethical rules, but you must operate, uh, you must, they must be uh, operated and uh, translated in uh, the language of these administrative decision procedures. And then you have the representatives of the, of the parliament. That means uh, the players are political parties with uh, perhaps uh, uh, different uh, standards. But that was also an interesting experience for me. Um, uh, one have um, perhaps the impression that uh, uh, the political parties are always fight, fighting with one another with completely uh, different uh, standards. Uh, coming to these kind of uh, uh, technical uh, applications uh, with uh, economic aspects, then it was for me interesting that uh, uh, the political difference in uh, the parties are more or less in the background. And, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it is a complicated discussion, uh, even on the uh, national level, but then you must imagine, I mentioned that in the beginning, the national level is not sufficient. It must be embedded on the EU level. 
and that means in Brussels. And uh, that is, of course, <laughs> another degree of, uh, of difficulty. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a complex process in the end, but uh, in a modern world, you must go this way. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you will be uh, restricted to um, philosophical discussions in university seminars, but in the end, uh, standards, ethical standards, legal standards, founded by uh, technological, ecological, economic insights must be realized. And here in Germany, we say the devil is in the details. And that is also true here in um, uh, the standardization process of AI. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for these insights. Uh, are there further comments or questions? So I also see that uh, Reinhard is back, so uh, maybe I can hand over to the actual host. <laughs> no, but I mean, that should not prevent anybody from making questions. Um, okay, may I still add uh, one point? Um, so, I mean, it was quite impressive, this pyramid we already saw twice, and I mean, um, Okay, there were some scores, but um, how to say that? Uh, is the approach normative, <laughs> so to speak? I mean, let's say the, the numbers could be chosen arbitrary. I mean, of course, I mean, you can scale it. So, but what's the point here? Is it okay? I find, um, I mean, I give, so to say, I don't want certain applications in medicine to be. Um, how to say that, in the yellow or uh, in the green part. So I have, I, I, I measure that uh, index number with this, this blue number. And then I see, okay, I have to lower uh, that, that, that threshold. Or, I mean, that would be the question, the threshold comes from somewhere and then I realize, oh, then medical um translations are in the critical area yeah yeah also um, i mean it is obvious uh, concerning the medical uh, application uh, in uh, medicine nowadays with respect to the degree of uh, reliability which is nowadays realized in uh, ai there are a lot of uh, uh, domains of medical application, which nowadays must still be in the red soon, obviously, uh, especially concerning uh, autonom uh, autonomous uh, uh, decisions. Because uh, here, the degree of security must be nearly absolute. Uh, I know no other domain with more demand of rigorousness, of accuracy, of security uh, than in, uh, in uh, uh, medicine. Um, uh, but uh, uh, the devil is in the detail. Uh, you must, of course, consider concrete situation. And then, for example, in surgery or where, wheresoever, um, and then you must in detail discuss how far is it possible here to introduce reliable uh, standards? They must not only be reliable in a, uh, a medical sense, they must be reliable in a legal sense. Yes. But, but, but that was my question. Now, conceptually, uh, that means I start from the cases where AI is applied and say, okay, I know here somehow um, there are risks. So because of that, I have to set my standards like that. My question was a little bit, okay, but at some point, of course, I mean, the standards are there and then the companies, I mean, work hard just to go under the threshold that it's allowed to bring the product on the market. Yeah. But is that the long-term scenario? Yeah, that is absolutely, 
uh, realistic scenario. And that can be also applied to all the other domains of uh, application. For example, car driving, the same situation. Um, uh, in Germany, we have uh, concerning security, uh, rather high standards, you know that. And, but on the other side, a company like BMW and Tesla are in a strong competition now. And now we have considered uh, the uh, 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 standards in Germany. And so uh, companies sometimes have their training uh, fields for uh, autonomous car driving in the US and not in Germany, only the test fields, uh, not of course practical um, uh, uh, everyday uh, application. But uh, it illustrates uh, the complicated situation uh, from an economic point of view. And then there are the different legal systems, of course. Legal aspects must be involved, of course, in standards. And um, even in uh, the European countries, these legal systems are different. That is a challenge uh, on the European level. And then in an international level especially in competition uh, with the uh, US. And then there is a third, uh, a third uh, player, you know, and in my last talk here, I uh, mentioned that, that is China nowadays and concerning standards. And if you have low standards or no standards, then uh, you can uh, go forward and uh, Ah, these are the, uh, the problems here, uh, the real problems. But uh, let us uh, at first consider uh, the European market and uh, that is uh, a complex, uh, sufficiently uh, complex. Um, yes, but, but, but uh, coming back to uh, uh, your question, uh, you have to integrate uh, the, integra the economic standards uh, with the legal standards, and the legal standards are more or less uh, representing our ethical uh, standards uh, with the technological uh, possibilities, and not only in medicine, but even in industrial applications, for example, car driving. Okay. Um, Thank you. Other comments? Then and so I think last last uh, um, let me uh, last remark. It illustrates that there is a dynamics in the standards. It cannot be the the goal, for example, of such a steering groups, to give a manifesto, like Moses in the Old uh, uh, Testament, uh, forever. But uh, the standards depends on the dynamics of. Uh, um, scientific uh, uh, progress. It demands on uh, change even in uh, uh, the legal standards. Remember biotechnology, uh, the standards uh, 10 years ago and nowadays, they uh, changed uh, rapidly, I must say, in Europe under the pressure of uh, perhaps of markets. And uh, that is also true here. So from a philosophical point of view, of course, there may be some hard course of standards, uh, which uh, in the end, we are not willing uh, to give up. For example, our European uh, understanding of uh, human rights, and that is quite different to China and perhaps even different to uh, the US market. But so there is a hard core, but uh, around this hard core, uh, there is dynamics. And so we will uh, continue uh, with, these, uh, with uh, uh, the steering group after the presentation at the uh, uh, AI market, uh, AI uh, summit uh, in the future. But it Maybe let me put here a last question to close. Um, so what are the next steps? I mean, you said, I mean, this, uh, your commission will go on, but I mean, now 
in the short term, you hand this over to the government and you wait that the parliament... No, 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 no. Um, uh, it is for the government, uh, more or less as orientation. And uh, so it has uh, advisory coordination tasks for the future, this group. Uh, but of course, we are no executive uh, group and uh, advisory group, and we can coordinate uh, in Germany the different uh, research groups with uh, economic interests, bringing together the uh, uh, companies with science, bringing together uh, the companies with uh, um, uh, the administrative and uh, uh, ministry part. Um, so it is perhaps uh, uh, one of uh, the few groups in Germany uh, which consider the whole uh, scenario. And uh, it is mainly a coordinating task uh, in the future. And um, yeah, and uh, uh, in a regular uh, period, uh, we will report uh, to the government uh, about our results for uh, to prepare to support their uh, executive uh, decisions in the parliament.